Welcome back for a very special episode. We just finished our Mechmas Holiday Special 2023, and you know what I decided? That wasn't enough battle tech for me. So we are going overtime, and we're starting a new battle tech series. We're going to be playing Mech Assault. Now, Mega Assault is a very interesting game because if you look at the early Battletech PC games, a lot of them were sort of RPGs or tactical games, you know, like I'm thinking the Crescent Hawks games. Then you had the first Mech Warrior, which became um, like a 3D simulator. And then that, of course, spawned Mech Warrior 2, Mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries. There was also Mech Warrior 2 The Ghost Bear Legacy, Mech Warrior 3, Mech Warrior 4, Mech Warrior 5, Mech Warrior 6, Mech Warrior 7, 8, 9. It just, it never ended, right? It was like an endless, I, I, I'm just kidding. I think it ended at Mech Warrior 5. But uh, so there was sort of the Battletech franchise and the Mech Warrior. And Battletech came back, right? Like Hairbrain Studios did a Battletech tactical game. So Battletech, the name, um, usually denotes some kind of tactical Battletech style game. Mech Warrior usually denotes um, a mech simulator game. And Mech Assault, as we're seeing here in the opening, also kind of, you know, indicates a Mech Warrior style game. But usually the difference, uh, and you guys can weigh in on this if you disagree, but in my perception, the difference tends to be that Mech Warrior is more of a simulator, whereas Mech Assault tends to be a little more arcadey and faster paced. So the the physics are a little more, you know, video gamey. It's less about being a tank simulator, more about like running and gunning. So we'll give it a shot. Um, oh, I forgot about Mech Commander, which is sort of like the real time version of Battletech. God, we gotta play Mech Commander 2 someday. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna play some mech assaults here. As you can see, we're gonna be running through buildings, blowing shit up. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's just see if there's any, uh... I guess you can choose your difficulty and stuff. Options? No, we don't need to affect any of that. Alright, let's just go ahead and hop in here. We are going to be playing, as I say, I believe the entire game. So, I'll shut up for these cutscenes, because I actually want to see what's going on. Hey, Sport, you ready? I've got our orders. The invasion still steps off as planned. They're not paying us to be late. But the best part is that we get to go in first. Just like old times. The intel boys say the enemy is powering up a set of nasty ground-to-orbit guns. If those are online when the rest of the Dragoons arrive, everyone dies. And we blow our bonus. So our little team gets to make a covert landing outside the range of the existing guns, sneak across half a continent, and take them out before our dropships show up. Just you, me, briefing boy here, a handful of pilots, and some of your favorite toys. You up for this? Oh yeah. We're getting some frame rate issues here. Hopefully that evens out a little bit. Mecha salt, yeah boy. So I believe the backstory is we're working for the Wolf's Dragoons. Clean. All systems normal. We're in the pipe. Touchdown in two minutes. We've been scanned. Weapon fire inbound. Lieutenant Foster, how do they detect us? Alpha, Bravo Lances, prepare to hot drop. I want you out of this crate now. Brace yourselves, boys. We're going in. I like how in the Battle Tech universe a giant egg lands on a planet and then just a, a bunch of mechs come streaming out. Okay, Captain, I have bad news and worse news. The bad news is that you're the only one who didn't make it out of the dropship before we hit. The worst news is that you're the only mech warrior anywhere near here. Here's a quick status report. It was a rough landing, but the Icarus held together, mostly. At the first sign of trouble, we hot dropped the other combat teams. Bravo Lance is out there somewhere, but we've lost all contact. Is there something beyond worse? Here it comes. The dropship's long-range sensors and weapon systems are out. They'll be coming for us, and soon. Lieutenant Foster tells me that most of our battle mechs are offline, but he's trying to get one up and running. So let's do what the Wolf Dragoons are paid to do. Improvise. Confirm your mech status, then recon and secure the immediate area. Fast. I'll keep trying to raise Bravo Lance on calm. Alright, let's do it. The Cougar is a light and fast mech, well suited for recon. It's interesting, because isn't the Cougar a clan mech? 
I mean, <clears throat> so the Wolf's Dragoons are an interesting faction because I know technically they were actually like a clan infiltration unit sent to the Inner Sphere to like gauge the, the the military prowess of the Inner Sphere, and they worked as a mercenary unit. They were from Clan Wolf, and then they they ended up sort of switching sides, and then they like legitimately helped the Inner Sphere fight off the clans and prepare. I don't, I don't know. Uh, like, I used to read the novels and stuff as a kid, but I feel like the Wolf's Dragoons, I was always confused on their loyalty. But, you know, let's check our mech stats here. <laughs> this is definitely... So, Mech Assault is sort of like Mech Commander, where they take the idea of Battletech and they very they really simplify a lot of the, the statistics. You know, Battletech is a game for, like, number nerds, where you look at the amount of heat and, and damage you do and the range, and you're, like, crunching numbers... This is like very simplified, you know. There's not a single number; it's all just visually depicted, which I'm fine with. It's, it's fine. It's it's good to have, I think, a variety of kinds of games in the BattleTech universe to appeal to all kinds of fans. And I did play this game a long time ago, I think, uh, on my original Xbox, like in like undergrad when I bought it. It was like I had Halo and Mech Assault. Um, so I think I did play this, or I think I had Mech Assault 2. I don't know if I've ever played the first one. Anyway, I'm, I'm curious to see how this, uh, how this goes here, but... Uh, whoops, I totally skipped that. I didn't mean to do that. I wish I could get that tip back. Um, okay, so... Let's see. So if I press Y, I switch to, like, my, uh, my auto cannon. If I press X, I switch to my lasers. I think I'm just killing a bunch of infantry, so that's... That's fine. What if you can just run them over? <laughs> you could do that in, um... Whatchamacallit. Um, oh, if you pull left trigger, you just cycle your weapons. Okay, that's good, because if I want missiles... Yeah, I, I need to invert the controller. There we go. Uh, wait. No, I don't. That was weird. Oh, there we go. Accept. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. And then, can you jump? The sensor readings come from beyond this ridge. Use your jump jets to hop over short obstacles. Okay, how do I do that? You are talking to a trained mech warrior, not a tank jockey. Click and hold the left thumb stick. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, I guess not that awkward, actually. Alright, go. use your left trigger to cycle through your weapons. Your currently selected weapon appears to the right of your HUD. Alright, easy enough. Look for salvage after destroying certain buildings, supply trucks, or enemies. Some salvage will replenish armor. Others will probably increase weapon power. Yeah, this is definitely sort of like the arcade version of Battletech. Usually salvage is, like, something you go in after a mission and, like, recover it, you know what I mean? You don't, like, pick it up on the battlefield and power your mech up. Uh, wipe out the supply convoy. So here's my question. The A button shoots. The right trigger shoots. A button should have been jump. Like, intuitively, I keep pressing the A button when I want to jump, you know what I mean? Um, so it definitely A should have been jump. Um, let's see. We oh, can fire missiles. <laughs> couple of, uh, a couple of long-range missiles just lock on to that infantry there. What happens if you click in the right stick? Nothing. Okay. So my only, like, complaint so far is that A should be jump. Other than that, you know what this feels like? It feels less like Mech Warrior and more like an extension of Mech Commander. You know, because Mech Commander also... It, so, like, Mech Warrior focused... Well, I guess Mech Warrior 2 focused on the clans. But, like, the original Mech Warrior focused on, like, 3025-era, like, Battletech mechs. Whereas, like, Mech Commander was, like, in the 3050s. He had sort of, like, the newer mechs, the clan mechs, um, that kind of stuff all mixed in. Since I'm literally starting out piloting a cougar, which I'm pretty sure- I mean, correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know the 3025 era of Battletech the best. When it gets into the 3050s, it's a little hazy for me, but I'm pretty sure the cougar here... 
Oh god, we're taking damage. Pretty sure the cougar here is a, uh, is a clan mech. So it's kind of intriguing that, um, you know, that we're, we're piloting one. Okay, they're, they seem, I think my crew's talking to me. Okay, this, this weapon sucks, by the way. Okay, I'm just getting, getting creamed here. Okay, I think the green is my armor and it is low. I'm gonna start being a little more tactical here. <clears throat> Oof! I wonder if later on you get to mod your mechs, because that's a big part of Battletech and Mech Warrior and stuff. Is coming up with like ridiculously overpowered mods. Where like you pack on like a thousand LRMs or whatever. Oof. Even a Mech Commander allows you to do that. You know what game didn't allow you it was the very first Mech Warrior. They missed out on that. Mech Warrior 1 did not allow you to customize your mechs. All right, here we go. Elementals. Oh, whoa, what the heck? It's toads that only have, like, one rocket pack. Normally they have two shoulder thingies, not just one. So weird. I feel like I'm in- my armor's too low to, like, fight a fair fight, so I'm gonna be a dirty dog about this. Sorry, guys. Oh, they're getting up close. All right. Laser time! I do like how destructible the environments are in this game. It's pretty cool. So my goal is to pilot an atlas. If we get to pilot an atlas in this game, then I'll be happy by the end of it. Jesus, these things take so many shots. Also, it's very non battle techy to just, like, fire pulse lasers and do nothing else, you know what I mean? Like, Battletech is all about, like, firing all your weapons, so... Yeah, this is very different from Mech Warrior. Very different. It's, it's a totally different kind of game. Really. This is like... I would say this is sort of, like, Battletech-inspired. Or you know what be, might be kind of interesting? What if, in-universe, this is what people in the Battletech universe played in their spare time? You know what I mean? Like, like battle mechs really exist. People really do pilot them, but, like, the kids and stuff play Mech Assault. <laughs> That, that could be a thing. Um, so if you guys are familiar with uh, the old Battletech TV show, uh, the, um, God, I think it's just called Battletech, but it was like the first Somerset Strikers, their mission against Nikolai Malthus. It was, it was a great cheesy, like, uh, you know, 90s TV show uh, that just happened to be Battletech themed. Um, and it has all sorts of things that, like, totally break from the, the canon. It takes place during the clan invasion, but it just definitely violates a lot of the canon. But the, the show was actually canonized in-universe as existing as a propaganda show that people watch in-universe. <laughs> so that's actually kind of a cool way, I thought, to, uh, take a pro- take something that the fans love, but the fan- even the fans know. Like, like, I liked that old show growing up as a kid, it was awesome, I still kind of like the episodes. But they're very cheesy, and they definitely violate the Battle Tech canon. But they found a way to nonetheless sort of, like, recognize it, which I think is awesome. Okay, we just got armor. That's how salvage works, you just walk over it, and now you're better. We also, like, just powered up our laser. And, uh, oh, look, our laser! Oh! You can power up weapons and they, like, fire better for a while. Like, now we have ammo. I understand. We should really test these weapons, though. So the autocannon here... I think this is, like, an autocannon 5 or something? It seems to fire slow and it sucks. Effects are nice, though. I'll grant you that. Like, what am I blowing up hospitals and stuff? They said to level everything. Oh, it's too slow. These weapons... Really, the pulse laser is where it's at. You want to level some buildings? Go with the pulse laser. I wonder if we can, like, get on top of a building. Can we do this? Oh, there's a guy up here. Hello, sir. Oh, we... Oh, no! <laughs> we failed the first mission! <laughs> Got too cocky.
Literally everyone in the base was dead and I somehow killed myself. Okay. Note to self. Don't do that. You know, it's better that we learn that on the first mission than later. I don't know why, but it's better that we learned it now. What? What an embarrassing... Embarrassing way to go. I like walking on these guys. It definitely in uh, the Crescent Hawks Inception, you could totally walk on uh, enemy soldiers. It was awesome. And then in Crescent Hawks Revenge, you couldn't do that, I recall. There's only a few instances where you ever even encounter enemy soldiers, but you can't walk on them. But uh, Westwood Studios, the company that made Crescent Hawks Revenge, would then go on to make Dune 2 and Command and Conquer. And there you could definitely drive tanks over soldiers and squish them. And it was a glorious moment. It's a glorious gameplay mechanic. Who wouldn't want to squish a soldier with a tank? In game, of course, obviously. I realize that's awful. Happens to bad guys all the time in movies and TV shows, though. Like Indiana Jones, Mad Max. It's just bad guys are just always getting squished by tanks, you know? It's their lot in life. Alright, we did those. Walk over these guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Squish, 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 squish. I think in uh, the Crescent Hawks Inception, you could also like kick. You could do like a melee attack, and you could literally like uh, kick, uh, kick infantry. I think. It's been a while since I played that game. That game was like my favorite battle tech game for a long time. I think it's definitely still up there. I've told this story before, but when I was a kid, uh, the, ba the Crescent Arcs Inception, I found, because my uncle, his computer that he had in his, in, in his basement, I would go play sometimes, and he just had, like, this big stack of, like, copy discs from, like, friends and stuff of his. And one of them, I just threw it in randomly, it was the Crescent Arcs Inception, and it blew my mind. It was, like, one of the most detailed, awesome RPGs I'd ever seen on DOS. And, uh, you know, it, like, really stuck with me. I mean, to the point where, like, the mech game that I've designed, uh, myself, looks like the Crescent Hawks Inception, right? Like, it was, yeah, very, it was very intentionally modeled after that, in the sense of, like, I wanted to recreate and modernize and bring the game that brought me so much nostalgic joy in my life back to life in modern times. So that, that's what Metal Mercs really is as, a, as its core. But anyway, uh, Chris Knox Inception was so cool, blew my little mind, and for a long time it was like my favorite game. Um, and then, I didn't even know there was a sequel, because back in the day, like, how did you figure anything out? Like, pre-internet, you just lived your life and hoped information found you somehow. And so one day, I was in a computer store and I saw the Battletech Power Hits. And I remember being like, what the hell? There's not only the Crescent Hawks Revenge, but also Mech Warrior 1. I think I'd played Mech Warrior 2 at that point, but I'd never heard of Mech Warrior 1. I mean, I should have deduced that it existed. Retrospect is a little silly that I didn't. Um, but I was like blown away by this, and I like begged my mom for the money she, uh, to buy it. She gave it to me. I like ran to the store because I was aff desperately afraid somebody else was going to buy this Battletech game. Nobody was looking for it. It had just been on their shelf for weeks. I was the only person interested. Didn't matter. Bought it. Took it home. Installed it. And basically loved it ever since, so... That's my little story of my Battletech PC gaming history. Oops. Okay, the jump jets here aren't super reliable for distance. There we go. Alright. They say it's a hybrid power armor. I don't know what that means. Is it power armor or is it not power armor? They look just look like toads to me. Or elementals, I guess. I don't know. Are we using the clan names or the inner sphere names? They look like little annoying mechs that take way too much damage to destroy. Jesus, how are these things so powerful? Jesus. I, you know what? I'm looking forward to fighting an actual mech. Jeez. You know what else this game reminds me of, too? It reminds me of the Super Nintendo, uh, Battletech game. The, like, Battletech 3050 or whatever. 
where you're running around in a mad cat. Uh, it's sort of like a top-down view. In fact, actually, maybe that's the game that this is most similar to, because that game also was Battletech-inspired, but didn't use the actual Battletech statistics and stuff, and did have a mechanic where, like, you had three different weapons, and you cycle between them. Yeah, th this is really a successor to that. The only difference, really, is that that game was sort of isometric, whereas this is third person. So they've literally moved the camera from being, rather than being above you, now it's kind of behind you. But other than that, it's it's virtually an extension of that. It's kind of interesting to think of it that way, actually. If my heat gets too high, do I blow up or do I just shut down? My heat's pretty high. I'm gonna stay away from this building while it collapses. Pretty sure these are like supply depots or something. Their armor or something in this? No. It is kind of cool how destructible the environment is, but it is kind of an annoying way to end the mission where it's like manually shoot until all the stuff is blowed up, if you wouldn't mind. Sort of like tedious. So when it comes to the modern MechWarrior games, I will admit I haven't really kept up with them. MechWarrior 2 I played the hell out of. MechWarrior 2, then MechWarrior 2 The Ghost Bears Legacy, and then MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries. Played them all. Probably the original MechWarrior 2 is the one I played like the most. But I played them all. Uh, really enjoyed them. I tried MechWarrior 3 and I was just like, no. No, no, no. Like I was kind of a snob about it. I remember back when I tried it, I was like, this is not MechWarrior 2. I don't like it, and I never played MechWarrior 3 as a result. And then I think I just sort of fell out of the MechWarrior series after that, like I never played 4 either. I've heard really amazing things about 5, and I do have to give it a shot. I had some friends who were really into MechWarrior online and told me how good it was, so... I don't even know if that's still going, but maybe I could give it a shot at some point. Um, but yeah, basically, I think around the time MechWarrior 3 came out, Mech Commander came out, and I recognized that I didn't think Mech Commander was as fun as, like, the old Crescent Hawks Revenge, but I also recognized it had way better graphics, and it had things that, uh, the Crescent Hawks Revenge didn't have. Like, the Crescent Hawks Revenge also, like Mech Warrior 1, did not have customization of your mechs, which was a big thing that was missing. It did have a ton, a ton of mechs. I think that game has more mechs than almost any other game I can think of. Like any other single battle that game. Because it had like everything in it. Every 3025 and 3050 inner sphere mech, and then it had a couple of clan mechs, so it was quite hefty in its uh uh in its uh roster of mechs. And it had this cool sandbox mode if you beat the game where you would go to Pacifica and become a trainer and you could just decide what units you had, what units the enemy had, and you could play infinite deathmatch match uh matches. Which you think would get old fast, but there's so many different scenarios you could try. It's like light mechs versus assault mechs, light mechs versus light mechs. You could have like a, a city invasion. You can do like assault beatdowns. You could just do all sorts of stuff. I played that for hours and hours and hours as a kid. Like to, to, to an unhealthy degree, to a point where like most people would say you have to stop, you're playing too much. Uh, okay, I hear rock music, and there's literally nothing left in this base. Uh, how do I see my objectives? Or can I even... Am I missing something? Do I have to destroy this, like, p pathetic fence? Like, hey man, make sure you wipe that fence out too, you know? Alright, just walk on it. The music also reminds me a bit of, like, Command & Conquer. That, like, sort of early to mid-90s where they're like, yeah, we'll put rock music in the game, make it badass, yeah! Blow up the mines, too. Alright, that's destroyed. Alright, everything is destroyed. What do you want me to do, game? Should I destroy these? In case. Okay, now I'll try going this way, I guess. I don't know. Not 100% sure on what I should be doing here. It's the direction I came from. 
Maybe I was supposed to jump up a ridge over in the base or something. Oof. Oof. No, this is just a dead end, too. And we'll destroy it. When the Wolf Dragoons take over this area and try and use the infrastructure, they're gonna be very upset at me. They're gonna be like, you literally collapsed every tunnel, every bridge. What were you thinking? Like, they don't pay me to think, Chief. Only to improvise. It's all about bravado. Hmm. Okay. Well... There's gotta be a way to see your... Destroy the base HQ as well as all defenders. Okay, so somebody's alive. Literally somebody survived. Or, or like this building. Oh! Hello! What the hell? Where were you hiding? That guy was hiding the whole time. The hell? Huh. We did it. <laughs> Pro tip! Sir, don't leave any survivors. Video feed from Bravo Lance. Finally. Transmit it. Hey! Watch yourself! I'm excited to see a vulture and a... Was that a summoner or Thor? Or is that the, That's the same Mac. I'm thinking of like a Loki. I think that was a summoner. Lieutenant, can you get that back? I can't, Major. There's nothing to get back. I see. Any sign of the rest of Alpha Lance? N no, sir. Captain, get back to the Icarus. For now, it's just you and that scout mech, but this operation continues. Like I said, Dragoons improvise. We need well, to move on with the campaign on our don't own. Don't be don't send me up against like a, a heavy First mech man. We'll just totally die. I'm excited to see those mechs because I do want to pilot better mechs. I'm already sick of the scout mech. Like scout mechs are fine when it's a tactical game and you throw some no name pilot into a scout mech when I'm piloting it. I'd like an Atlas, please. Or failing that, I will take a Mad Cat or a Vulture or something, but like you know, a cougar is pretty lame. Okay, destroy the comm tower. Locate and destroy the communications tower. This will slow defensive forces across the region. Defeat any and all forces supporting and defending. This is 100% like that MechWarrior 3050 game from Super Nintendo. Okay, so let's do it. Oh, and you actually do get a choice. Okay, so Cougar is a light and fast mech. Uh, well suited for recon. The Puma is a variant of the Cougar, but is built around the PPC. Is that true? Are these actually different... I mean, I, I want to use a PPC, so we're totally going to take it, but um, I didn't know the Puma was a variant of the Cougar. Is that true or is that made up for this game? Now I'm questioning my battle tech knowledge. Should be simple. I still can't believe they're trying to stop you with infantry. Destroy any and all forces supporting. Oh, look at this. You can charge the PPC. Oh! Oh, and it kind of like home, homes in too. That's cool. That does make it different than lasers. It's cool when the PPC is. I, I kind of like this charging. It's like a Mega Man gun. Okay. We have this. Oh, we have a machine gun. I'll take it. That's good against uh, infantry, probably. Truthfully, I wasn't that excited about the pulse lasers, so I'm fine to be without them. I wonder if they give you real lasers, because pulse lasers are like a variant of a laser. There's lasers, pulse lasers, and ER lasers. Lasers are more like beams in Battletech, usually. Well, it depends which Battletech. Sometimes they're like little, uh, blasts of energy. Map becomes submerged in water, you will take flooding damage. Oh no. Oh, we just sink this ship. I don't even know if this is our ship or not, but down it goes. I'm, I'm liking the PPC, frankly. I hope that when you get heavy mechs, they fire dual PPCs. One of my favorite mechs is the Marauder. I also really like the Awesome. And, uh... Essentially anything with at least two PPCs is cool in my books. 
Look at that. We're just gonna PPC these infantry too, one at a time. Boom. Oh, we missed. Okay, we might as well uh, just machine gun them all down. Stand on the river, <laughs> the river bed, and get slaughtered, punks. Come here, you punks. There we go. Easy enough. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, God, the bridge is blowing up. Nope. Just get it away from the bridge for a second here. Oh, I got upgraded machine guns. I'm not sure how I feel about this, like, picking up salvage in the field and getting upgrades. It's not really salvage at this point. It's just... It's just, um... I don't know what you call it, you're just picking up power on the battlefield, like power or tokens or whatever. It's very arcadey and very, like, non-Battletech. Like, in no iteration of actual Battletech, do mechs walk over glowing remains of missiles and get better missiles than that? It's just not a thing, you know? And, like, I don't hate it. It's, it's a fine gameplay mechanic, but it does sort of, like, like I'm noticing it, you know? PPC. So the PPC is kind of cool in that it will just kill the infantry, but it is like totally like not worth it Because the amount of time it takes to kill the infantry is a little ridiculous But we will collapse that so that they stop coming Also, I will be happy when we aren't fighting infantry anymore because they all they are small and annoying Oh good Hey, guess what, guys? I have PPC now. Where are you? Jesus, they're actually flying high, man. Wonder if this thing can overload. That... That PPC blast better have killed that one guy. Tell me these things... These... They can survive a PPC blast! Okay, they... They die after two, though. Man, this thing is so fucking satisfying. Boom. Oh, he dodged it. Good for you. Too bad I got infinite of those babies. Infinite... Infinite shot... Homing charge... Gun. Better believe I'm gonna use a lot. Okay, let's check out- I think these are short-range missiles. Or they're just upgraded or something. They feel like, um... They feel- yeah, I think these are SRMs. They feel faster firing than the LRMs from the previous mech. I really like this mech loadout a lot better than the Cougar. The Cougar, it had the pulse laser, but everything else kind of sucked. Although, I would be curious to try its autocannon fighting another mech. Like, I feel like using an autocannon to fight infantry is not what the autocannon was meant for, it seems. The autocannon seemed to be like a slow firing, um... A slow-firing weapon. So you gotta imagine each shot does, like, quite a bit of punch. So against another mech, the autocannon might feel better. Oh, you know what mech I wouldn't mind piloting, actually, would be a King Crab. If they have a King Crab in this game, I would definitely pilot that. That's one of- I- I will say dual PPCs or dual autocannon 20s are, uh, are weapon pairings that I enjoy, personally, so. Take either, really. It does also feel like a bit of a cheat where, like, your missiles and stuff have infinite ammo. It feels like only lasers and stuff should have infinite ammo. So yeah, this is this is this is so far from BattleTech. It's like if you squint, it looks a little like BattleTech. They've used some of the names from BattleTech, but yeah. Here's a fun fact, let's, or a, a fun question. Let's keep this entirely narcissistic. <laughs> what do you guys think is more Battletech like? My game, called Metal Mercs, or this? Whoa, God. Like, if this game was called, like, uh, Mech Fighter, and it didn't have the Battletech branding, and my game is called Metal Mercs, it doesn't have the Battletech branding. My game has differences from Battletech, don't get me wrong. Um, which one is more Battletech like? I'm biased, so I'm not- I, I mean, you, you can probably guess what I would say personally, but whatever. I'm also biased, so don't listen to me. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, so this game, this game has the universe of Battletech, but very different mechanics. My game is, I mean, you, you could debate, you could, you could argue, maybe it doesn't. I would say my game has some mechanics that are more similar to at least a tactical Battletech, maybe? Um, but it doesn't have the universe, um, it has its own universe. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're just like two different wines. Each one is tasty in its own way, and neither is superior. I think that's a, a better way to think of it, maybe. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Narcissism over. Let's focus on, uh, Mech Assault here today. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be destroying these buildings. I mean, I've come so far. I'll just finish destroying it. Stay in here and do it. Yeah, destroying buildings is a little tedious here. Oh, there it goes, finally. I will say that uh, these SRMs actually are really growing on me. I very much enjoy them. Ooh, powered up PPC. See, as soon as you power up a weapon, it seems like the best strategy is to go to your non-powered weapons to keep destroying buildings. Why the hell would I fire a powered up PPC on these buildings? Right, like it's a big waste of, uh, waste of your power up. I do like these SRMs. Which is funny, because in Mech Warrior, I like LRMs more than SRMs. Because in Mech Warrior 2, LRMs were way overpowered. You know what's funny is, in Mech Warrior 2, I would load my mech up with LRMs. I'd customize the mech to have like a thousand LRMs. Um, and then when I'd go into battle, I would lock onto an enemy from extreme distance, and I would just alpha strike him. And he would literally, like, it doesn't matter what mech it was, one or two alpha strikes, and they'd be destroyed. Um... And so it's like I almost never had to fight mechs directly because of the alpha striking LRMs. And then truthfully, I think when I tried Mech Warrior 3, I tried that strategy, it didn't work anymore. That was one of the reasons I might have been like, forget this noise, and I just... I was like, my, my, my glor... My glorified cheese strategy doesn't actually work, I actually have to, like... Fight, and, and I think I did try a few fights and it wasn't very good, so I kind of gave up. But I would be actually much more interested to go back nowadays and play Mech Warrior 3. Um, like, I, I I think it's probably a pretty good game. Most I don't think there's any Mech Warrior games that are like, you know, just objectively bad. Maybe it's not very good, I don't know. But Mech Warrior 5 is definitely like on my radar to one day check out. Gotta like make the time to do it. I'm not playing through Mech Assault. The classic Battletech game from 2002, an Xbox launch title, if my uh, history is on point. Which there's a 50-50 chance it is. Whoa, that's fun. Blowing up fuel canisters is always a treat. I just walked into that building and damaged it. They'll destroy this building, then we'll move on. The whole destroying building thing is getting old really quick. I like in Mech Commander how you can just walk up and capture a building and if it had anything in it, you'd get it. This is like gradually pummel these buildings into dust. I need armor, that's why I'm kind of doing this. I'm kind of desperately hoping one of these has armor. It did not. Okay. Just carry on. I, I totally forget what my mission is, by the way. Hopefully I'm doing it. Hopefully this is what they wanted. Uh oh, battle mech is coming out. Oh, here it comes too. Get the PPC out, boys. Where is he? Boom. Oh, is it like a locust or something? It looks like a locust. That's awesome if it is. Or it could be a flea, because it is like the 3050 era, right? Come on, PPC him! Oh, I think he's limping. Oh my god, my armor is almost toast. Okay, I think I gotta switch tactics here. 
Go down! Oh, we got him. I'm gonna die like to, uh... Oh god, give me... You had armor, right? Oh, thank god. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna die to the next shot from, like, a tank. Oh, Jesus, that was brutal. That was close. This is on easy? Or... So I don't know what it's on. I assume normal or easy. Or maybe it's on hard, man. That was... Tricky mission. Oh, is that armor over here? Yes. That's- oh! Balls, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Let's go kill these guys now. Now that their precious defender is dead... Wait, we haven't even destroyed the communication complex? I just kicked that bus! Okay, let's jump up here. Destroy this thing. I think we're hitting the... yeah, there we are. Okay. Can't see what's going on, all this behind-the-shoulder thing. Oh god. Okay. There we go. Word of Blake. They were like the Comstar offshoot fanatics, right? So, I think once the word of Blake showed up in the Battletech universe, that's around the time when I sort of checked out. I will say, even to this day, like, my favorite era is 3025. 3025, up until, like, I like the beginning of the clan invasion, because it's like, the clans were so mysterious, and they came on so hard, and the Inner Sphere had to, like, pull together. Um, but then I think what happened is, gradually, as the Inner Sphere caught up in technology, it became less in- the clan invasion became less interesting to me. I like when the clan had more advanced tech than the Inner Sphere, and then the Inner Sphere had a bit of recovered lost tech. Um... I guess all the way up into, there was like that dual operation to push uh, Clan Smoke Jaguar out of uh, the Draconis Combine while simultaneously heading to the homeworlds to fight a war of refusal or something like that, trial of, of refusal. And they like literally obliterated Clan Smoke Jaguar, the Star League Defense Force did. Um, that's sort of around the time where I'm like, that's as far as I go, I think, in terms of like... Um, I don't know what the word is, like, my commitment to the universe? Like, it's- it's not that I wouldn't play something that takes place out of that era, but it's like, that was like the peak era for me, you know? <clears throat> Alright, uh, wait, what's my mission? Say- fight your way through the enemy-held city and defeat the group assaulting the local Resistance HQ. Oh, we gotta take a Puma for that- we need some PPC support for that, son! Give me a mission of that caliber. Oh, I'll find the resistance, all right. And also blow up this random bridge embankment. Because it looked at me funny. It was showing up weird on my radar, Captain. They are? That might have been me, actually. I'll be frank, I just kind of fire at anything. Anything that happens to highlight, I fire at. I took down that helicopter. Hopefully, hopefully that wasn't one of ours, folks. Oh, I think I blew up an ambulance that they- <laughs> They're like firing at an ambulance trying to destroy it, and I blew it up in service of- Oh, I think I just kicked a car off- Oh! Sorry! Are there civilians in here? I mean, intentionally tried not to destroy that car. Alright, let that be a lesson to you. If you weren't a civilian, you got what's coming to you. If you were, I'm deeply sorry. But you shouldn't be in a war zone, it's... Kind of, uh, kind of a, uh, one of my rules for civilians. Don't be in war zones. 
Let's, uh, take this punk down, man. Come on, Uller. I don't know which... I, I mean, I assume the PPC just does more damage. It's also a distance weapon, so I should probably just keep my distance from him. Boom, PPC'd that dude. Alright, where'd that Uller go? Oh, is it running away? Looks like it... it look, he looks like he's fleeing. And he's like jump tactics. Oh, did he blow that up? Oh, he's he's literally bailing. Is there a boat shooting at me? Alright, jump! Can't believe that that guy actually took off. He took off running. It's actually pretty funny. Alright, where'd you go? Oh, does he? Guess what? Somebody left a bunch of power-ups out around here. I wonder if you could destroy this guy before he gets to this, like, little ambush area that he set up. Maybe not. Boom! I think that got him. Where are these little guys? I wish I could just walk on these guys. Oh my god, come back! You little peasant! Oh, with the jumping. Hey, I have an idea. This thing looks pretty explosive. Maybe if I can lure them over here. Just blow it up. Did I kill anyone? Anyone else want to come fight me over here? Are they too smart for that? That's shocking if the AI is smart enough to, to know not to go near the explosive barrels. Also roundly disappointing. Boom. Oh, there we go. It is super satisfying to uh, watch a mech you've targeted blow up. I think that guy died too. Well, he's alive, eh? Oh, he survived that! Thought that building exploding would get him. Boom, there we go. Oh, we got full armor. Look at this. Nice ambush. They left power-ups lying around everywhere. I mean, I'm not complaining, but uh, I'm just saying you guys are a little stupid. Frankly. What's my mission again? Destroy all enemy forces you come across. Keep an eye out for those persecuting the populace. Roger, roger. Okay, so we've seen a PPC, we've seen an autocannon, we've seen short range and long range missiles. What else is there? Okay, that is definitely... I, I think it's not a locust. I mean, I guess so, Battletech went through this period where, like, a lot of the 3025 mechs, which were based on Robotech destroids and stuff, and Veritech fighters, couldn't be used, because even though Battletech licensed them, there was a troll company who also licensed them, called Harmony Gold, who said, nah -uh -uh, we own it, which they didn't, and... Like, I think Harmony Gold finally now no longer has the rights. You know, they got... they finally got appropriately sued. Um, uh, but... Jesus, when battle mechs blow up, they blow the F up, man. Actually pretty crazy. Um, but basically it means there's an era in like the 2000s and stuff where essentially you didn't see the Locust, the Warhammer, the Marauder, the Rifleman. Uh, you did see the Jenner. Because uh, that wasn't uh, one of the originals. 
didn't see the Phoenix Hawk, you didn't see the Shadow Hawk. I don't think of what else. The Battle Master. No, wait. You did see the Battle no, You did or you didn't? Now, I, now I'm tricking myself. Pretty sure you didn't. Um. But anyway, eventually all those mechs would come back into the fold. Like, if you, if you play the Harebrain Studios uh, Battletech, I think every single one of those mechs is there. As they should be. Especially, like, the Locust. It's just so damn classic. Can't not have a Locust. Oh, and, uh, Stinger and Wasp. Those are two other mechs. Uh, wipe out the enemy forces occupying the city. Oh, man! Are you sure there's any city left to occupy? I feel like they just sort of, uh, obliterated that one. Okay, I'm just gonna walk on these guys. Ooh, a mech. I just wanna do mech on mech fighting. How about all these vehicles just go away? Can we do that? Oh, there's like two mechs. This is awesome. Yes, finally mech battles. You know what I love playing Battletech games with mechs is when you fight just a bunch of like infantry and trucks. I guess it's okay if they let you fight other mechs once in a while. Just don't make a habit of it. Just kidding, like this this is like literally what you want if you're playing a Battletech game, is to like This is actually a little scary. They are whittling me down. I kind of have no armor left. <laughs> are there any power-ups around here? I think I'm gonna die. I think legit, like. Oh god. Yeah, I'm going down. Went down hard. Oh god, they can like hit you from such a distance. I'm getting hit by like auto cannons and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Oh god. I try and make a run for it back to that base where um there were uh there was like armor power ups, and we'll come back and fight them. I survive. Jump. I like how your mech, like, there's, like, uh, you can see the cores, like, starting to, like, you know, break down, and you got, like, a little electrical thing sparking off. They're cool effects, cool visual effects. I mean, the game looks great. Um, and it doesn't even play bad, either, just, uh, you know, again, just not, not Battletech pure. Okay. I'm ready. Let's go in a little more strategic this time around. Oh god. <laughs> Just like bl stepping on things and blowing them up on my way over. Like you can- as, you know what, I'm not gonna mess with that. I was gonna say you could like climb up this mountain or something. Oh hello, you came to me. Come on buddy. On PPC him. I guess one other thing that's very non battle techy is that uh, it doesn't seem to matter where I hit him, and I can't even target specific body parts. Battle tech is all about like uh, you know, like taking out specific body parts, and then certain weapons go offline, and this and that. You know, like it's very it's hit location specific. Go down. I also feel like there's nothing I can really do to dodge his shots. He's just hitting me with everything. Because everything in this game kind of homes in. Okay, I think he's dying? He dropped a mine or something? I don't know what that was. Alright, he went supernova. We got him. Then you get health out of him. It's It's such like an arcade game. Um, you know, my tactic when I played MechWarrior 1, actually, it's funny, I guess my tactics in MechWarrior 1 and 2 were very similar. It was like engage at extreme range. So in MechWarrior 2, it was all about the LRM spam. In MechWarrior 1, the autocannon 5, it had a maximum range, but it could actually damage units outside that maximum range. You just had to line the shot up manually. And I, like, perfected the exact spot I had to aim on a mech, in order to hit their legs, and so I could pelt them with autocannon fives from extreme range, 
So before they even got range, in range to return fire, I could destroy one or two, one of their legs. And if you destroyed a leg in MechWarrior 1, the mech would fall to the ground and then be disabled. So it's like the, the easiest way to kill an enemy mech was to actually aim at their leg. Um, rather than trying to take out their torso, which is much more heavily armored. So it's like I had another cheese strategy, which was uh, auto cannon 5, usually from my um, Marauder, but sometimes a Rifleman if I was in a pinch. And uh, cheese him down from range. The only other tactic I... <laughs> specific tactic I remember from that game was to pilot either a Locust or a Jenner. And on missions where you had to, like, take out an enemy base, what you would do is you would order all your heavy units to directly engage the enemy, and the enemy would, like, beeline towards your heavy units, and then once they started engaging, you just, like, ran behind enemy lines and, like, gunned down the building really quickly. So I do remember that. I think you could also get behind enemy units, and they would ignore you as long as you didn't open fire on them. So again, you'd have your lance mates engage in open fire, and then you would kind of run up, and they would kind of ignore you, and then as soon as you were, like, behind them or whatever, very close range, you would just go nuts with the machine gun on their legs, and you could take out, like, even a battle master, which was the biggest mech in the game. Um, and the one other thing, since we're talking about Mech Warrior 1, the one other thing that I'm remembering is, uh, that, um, if you hired, there were a couple sketchy pilots, um, mission successful. Um, and if you hired these sketchy pilots and put them in one of your mechs, sometimes you'd be in the middle of a mission and you check to see where your guys are, and one guy's just like running, like he's, he, you see his like silhouette on the horizon, he's just like running into the distance, and they would steal your mechs. It would, they would abandon you and steal your mechs, it was hilarious. Um, oh man, little, little bits of charm like that are, are, are very fun when you encounter them in games. Like, you hire a sketchy mech pilot and he steals your mechs. It makes sense. This is pretty hilarious. All right, this will be our last mission for today. Ooh, the Uziel. A medium mech built to bring impressive firepower to bear. Double PPCs! You damn well better believe we're piloting an Uziel. Secure your flank. Cripple the Wob air power. World of Blake. Destroy key structures. Destroy the helicopter depot and the prototype hangar. Deny them the use of the skies, and destroy the enemy tank depot. Okay. <clears throat> Uziel. This is another clan mech, isn't it? Again, I know the Wolf Dragoons are technically from Clan Wolf, but I'm pretty sure they're operating in the Inner Sphere. I don't... I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like they do actually have access to all of this, uh... All this clan technology. Or maybe the Uziel is an inner sphere mech. I, I now I'm questioning everything. You guys let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Although I will be honest with you, I will probably record episode two before um what is firing at me? I will probably record episode two before I read the comments. So if I'm still just as clueless in the next episode, forgive me. So we have a machine gun. I'm gonna fire on every building because I don't know what's what. I'm supposed to draw, destroy like a tank factory and stuff. No idea what that even looks like, man. I guess I should be looking for the building where the tanks are coming out of. But frankly, it's a little chaotic right now. Oh my god, these stupid... Rocket launchers. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure there's a tank building somewhere around here because tanks just keep spawning. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's destroy this mofo. Can you die? Stop shooting me. Charge up! Double PPCs can destroy anything! Okay. We did it. Boom. I am really liking the double PPCs, I'll be honest. Oh, we got armor. Okay. We're good to go. Gonna fire a warning shot off there. 
jump over here. Whoa. Alright, helicopters are scrambling. I like how there's like weather effects and rain. That's just pretty cool. Just gonna blow up that ship. Blow up that ship. You try and take off in this weather. See how, see how well that goes for you, you bastards. Oh, you have helicopters, eh? I think the missiles are better. You're fighting all these, like, endless helicopters. Yeah, these hangers like spawning enemies or what? Should I be taking these hangers out? To change position of drawbridge, destroy its control tower. Raised bridges will go down, lowered bridges will be raised. I was supposed to destroy those hangers, but they're gone. If I knew where these helicopters were spawning from, I would take care of it. More of these aircraft. Yeah, they're stationed at the docks. We're looking at the base. All right. Oh god! Look at that building that was landing on me. I will say the emphasis on, uh... On, on fighting vehicles... ...could be lessened. So in MechWarrior 1, I don't think you fought a single vehicle, it was all mechs. It was like, vehicles didn't even exist in the universe. I'm okay with. Oh, I'm gonna die here, aren't I? Oh my god, that's another Uziel? The stupid helicopters could just stop for a second. Oh, I keep missing it. Oh. Almost going Nova. Missing. Wow, he hasn't got his PPCs off on me once. Suck, dude. I freaking love PPCs. Okay, helicopter control tower. Down. Like there's almost no point to trying to destroy these helicopters. They just keep wailing on me. So whatever. Go have at it, you rascals. I guess. Ooh, upgraded missiles. Maybe there's a point to taking them down. I do really like these SRMs. They're good. These are boats. Okay, where is this helicopter? Is it... Oh, it's up here, I guess. Blow up this building, too, because it's fun to blow up the fuel depots. Boom! Explosions are so satisfying. Okay, here's their stupid helicopter control point. Just try and stop me. Damn, this building takes a lot. Sure it's destructible? 
I've wasted all my See, this is the thing about the game, is like, you have to spend so many shots destroying these buildings. It's sort of like, was it worth it to use all my good rocket ammo to do this? And I, I'm still getting pelted. There we go. Back to the Icarus ASAP. Oh god. Oh, these, the, the stupid turrets are still alive. I thought they got destroyed. Okay, where's the last helicopter? You bastard. Oh god, that, the helicopters... You know what I like in, uh, in games is when enemies fly around you and pelt you from every goddamn direction. It's so fun. There's this bloody thing. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's like the reason I don't play, like, uh, Rogue Squadron and stuff. Because I can't stand when enemies engage you from all sorts of different directions. There we go, finally. Alright. We do have a fully charged, crazy PPC, though. Boom! Oh! Yeah, dog! <laughs> I mean, sir? Two Blake battle mechs. Uh-oh. Wolf's Dragoon Scum. This is Adept Straight. They, uh, I was gonna say, are they disabled, or can we, like, strip them for parts? But it looks like there's guys in there, but they're just, like, talking shit. Oh man, the charged up PPCs I feel like are doing so much damage to them. Oh, come on. Oh, I missed! Oh yeah. The supernova won really easily. Oh man, I just... I can feel the power when it hits. Hello. Boom! Not even gonna move. Cause you're done. Damn. That was sweet. As I did your scattered friends, your demise is at hand. Captain, return to the Icarus. Let this madman rant to somebody who cares. Yeah, bitch. We don't want to listen. All right, so some evil commander is trying to kill us. Well, um, this has been the first part of uh, a series. I don't know how many episodes it'll be, but it'll be till we are done. Mech assaulting. Guys, have you been enjoying the mech miss? And have you enjoyed today's mech assault video? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you're having a great holiday season. You're getting some gaming in yourself. You're getting some mech miss in yourself. Mech miss doesn't have to end at Christmas. Mech miss can really go all year round. So that's why we're still going. Um, but yeah, tune back in soon for the next part of the series. But until next time, my friends, remember no guts, no galaxy. And I will see you soon in a Battletech-affiliated universe. Alrighty, guys. Peace!